The purpose of this video is to show you in a quick way how you can use the Vernier video analysis software to help track motion from a video. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, show you quickly how to do that. All right, so I've gone to the uh, app, the video analysis dot app site. We get this file, this screen, and I'm going to uh, open a saved file, or I'm going to import a video, sorry, from my computer. And I'll use one of the old ones that I've used in previous years, which is of a spring gun physics uh, that we use in class here for some of the stuff. I'll choose this one. Um, the better the video, the better this will turn out. Now, there are a few things we need to look at. So obviously, this is a classroom. We're going to shoot the projectile from this gun. And as we go through the video, you'll see me walk over. Um, so in the video, I've just clicked, uh, clicked record. Important things to note here is we need to set up a system first so that the, the computer can uh, measure, make measurements based on this. So two things here, we've got to set up a scale and I've got a meter stick in my image and that's going to be used to set up the scale so that the computer knew, knows how big a meter is. So I'm going to take these two points uh, from the scale and drag them to the end and I'll get close, but not, I don't know if I'm perfect. So I can use my mouse wheel to zoom in and then put them at as accurately as possible at the edges of this. And I'll have to zoom out and zoom back in on this side. Oh, I nailed that one. Maybe move it just a freckle in. We get a, it gets so close that it's a little bit fuzzy. And then the other thing I wanna do is set the origin by clicking on this button. And that'll just be nice. I'm gonna click it and drag it up to the end of the spring gun there. That'll just be where my zero is. And then I can, I, I can find the video uh, controls down here. So play obviously plays. I'm going to pause it here. These buttons or keys make the video go back or forward by one uh, frame, which can be useful. I'm going to zoom in here so that I can definitely see when this is coming out and just click and see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to release it soon. If I overshoot, not a big deal because I'll be able to go back. Oop, I went too far. So I'm going to go back. Can't see it. I think I cannot see it there. So I go forward one. And here's the ball. Now it comes out as a streak because the camera records at about 30 frames per second. And so during that 1 30th of a second, the ball has moved and it's picked up a little bit of the motion in each part. If we were to watch this in full time, it wouldn't look so weird. Um, it would just sort of move across and our eyes would do the rest. Um, but what I wanna do here is I want to add a, uh, a point. And when I click on this now, it's gonna put a dot there and uh, then advance the film by one frame. So I, I'm gonna follow the leading edge of this of the ball here click there's the dot and it advanced the frame click there's a dot i'm going to zoom out so that i can get back everything into the frame if this becomes troublesome like if you're tracking something that is going up and straight up and down or something that's moving slowly so that these blue dots are getting in your way, you can turn that off by clicking the trails button. I'm gonna leave it on just cause it'll, mine's moving enough that I don't have to worry. I'll zoom in, keep zooming in. If it gets to a point, since I didn't record these with the best backdrop, if it gets to a point where I can't make it out for a frame, um, I can just skip that one and go to the next frame and put the next dot down if I can pick it up again. Yeah, I'll finish this up. I think I got, looks like I got one more here, maybe two before it falls under the edge of the table. So here, it's pretty tough to tell. I'm gonna put a dot there because I think it's there. 
can see a little bit of a lightning, um, but that's it. So that shows the path to the ball. So now we're kind of done with the video part now that I've uh, laid out my dots and I'm going to come over here to the measurement part. So I'm just clicking and dragging that. Um, and I'm particularly interested in the graph rather than the numbers. I could export these and put them into something like Excel or Google Sheets and do a lot with them. Um, but right over here, I just want to look at a couple of the different components of it. So because this was a two-dimensional plot, uh, this was moving in both X and Y, I get both of those, uh, the information from both. But for right now, I'm going to look at just the X. So I'm going to click on this and I'm going to deselect the Y. Okay, so this looks like a fairly linear thing. Um, if this is showing the displacement in X versus the time. Uh, one thing I can do is I can highlight a bunch of this. And let's say that looks, gosh, that looks kind of linear. Wouldn't it be nice to see if that's a line and do some math on it and figure out the slope in the formula? I can. Um, these graph tools down here allow me to do that. So I can view statistics, uh, do all this. Apply a curve fit is a useful tool for me. And so it defaults to linear. I could change it to a different shape. Um, but if I apply, it applies a linear fit. It even gives me the formula. If I were to try something else, let's turn off the X and turn the Y back on. This doesn't look linear anymore. So I could select this and try a different fit down here. Uh, obviously not linear. Uh, maybe power. Ooh, not a power. Maybe a quadratic. Oh, that's beautiful. And apply that. And I get statistics for the quadratic and the formula for it. I can also, it's already got, if we look down at the bottom, it's already done some calculations here based on the velocity uh, uh, and motion. So that's pretty slick. I could click here and say, I don't want to look at the displacement and why I want to look at one of these velocities. Click on that and we can do the same sort of math. So it already does sort of the calculations to find the velocities based on the fact that we set up and we showed it, here is what one meter means. Okay, so a lot to do here. Um, I can, I cannot here show the acceleration. That's actually a, a new or a feature that some others have had. Um, I could predict the what the acceleration looks like though based on the shape of velocity. So there is something about that. And I can still make, if I'm clever, I can still make an acceleration measurement. Uh, over an average amount of time or an average acceleration over amount of time. So that's something we can talk about as well. Um, but as in a basic way, this is how you can use the software. Okay, and that's all I've got on this topic.